Hi, this is Stephanie Megan. You're listening to Broke Girl Therapy. Because therapy is too expensive. You're listening to Broke Girl Therapy. Broke Broke Girl Girl Therapy. Hello, everyone. It is me, yo girl, Stephanie Megan. I guess the fuck what? Just fucking guess. I am alone by myself on this show. And literally, my friend Jess was supposed to come on the show, but canceled. And I called every single fucking person on my phone, and no one was available. No one was free. And I really just think the universe was like, bitch, you need to do something different for the show. So now I'm being pushed into this direction to really try something new. I'm not quite sure how it's going to go, if y'all will like it or not, but I think it'd be really cool to really take this time and to get to know a lot of you guys and to talk to you directly versus talking to my guest. Like, I think I want this to be more personable. And if you follow me on Instagram, I put up uh, my phone number for you guys to call. It's my Google number, not my real fucking phone number, chill. Yeah, so some of y'all called and left a message. And also some of y'all slid in my DMs and gave me your fucking number. So I give you a call. And yeah, hopefully y'all like this. And comment below on YouTube and let me know if this is something that I should continue to do. Just an opportunity to talk to you individually. But anyways, let's enjoy these phone calls, shall we? I'm going to call someone. I'm going to call somebody. Ah! I'm so nervous. Okay. I'm like so nervous. I need like me to pray. I don't know why. I'm ner- Are you nervous? I'm nervous. Let's all be nervous. Uh. Okay. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Come on, y'all. Hello? Hi, this is Juliana. Hi, yes, this is she. It's Stephanie from Broco Therapy. Oh, hi. Hi, how are oh you? Oh, my God. I'm Good, re- how are you? I'm literally recording right now, and I'm making phone calls and calling oh everyone. My oh, my God. Hi. Hi. Do you want to be anonymous? Can oh, I say your name? Oh, my name? God, okay. I love your podcast. I'm you- sorry. Do you want me to say your name? Do you want to be anonymous? Just to make sure. Um, you can say my name. It's okay, fine. Juliana. What's up, girl? <laughs> oh, my God. How are you? I freaking love your podcast. Thank you. I'm good. How are you? What's your life? I'm doing good right now. It's just I'm working. How I ended up. Where are you living from? Life. I'm from San Jose. <gasps> oh, my God. So you're the Bay. Yes, I'm in the day. I love that for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to know everything. <laughs> okay, I'm a, I'm 23. Okay. I um just well, I graduated college like a year ago. Okay. And I'm working in law right now. Ooh, bitch! And, that fucking law yeah. degree. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Mexican. Um, oh my God, what else? Yeah, right now I'm not dating. I'm just kind of having fun. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. I know. I feel like I know you. I'm like, I listen to, I try to listen to a podcast every single day at work. It's like, <sighs> helps me get through my day. Oh, thanks. How long have you been listening? Um, I actually just found it like probably two weeks ago. Oh my God. So you're like new, new. Yeah, I'm new, new. Like I listened, I tried listening to every podcast. Oh my um, god! But yeah, did you start from the so beginning? I, like, found it and I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I did. Oh my god, Ugh. it's so good. It's so cringe. I mean, it's good for everyone else because it's cringy for me. <laughs> no, it's, it's like super good to know because it's like I, like I don't know. I just like it gives me good advice and everything that <laughs> that I like just have questions about, and that. it actually answers some of them. Oh, I love that. Thank but, yeah. you. Well, you're amazing. And I Thank hope you, so you continue to listen and I don't bore you. 
<laughs> no, you don't. Oh my god, you're hilarious. I always get insecure. I'm like, is anyone still here? I know that people are still listening, but I'm like, when I record, I just put it up, and I'm like, you know, I just live my life. So I'm like, yeah. Is anyone out there? <laughs> no, girl. I'm always waiting for that new podcast. Thank you. I appreciate you. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. So DM me your address. I'll send you a t-shirt. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And then also send me your size. Okay, thank so, yeah. you so much. Send you that tea, bitch. Okay. So you can wear my face on your back. You feel me? Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. Thank you. Just so much talking to you. Appreciate okay. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Okay, who should I call next? Should I be like, what, do you have advice? Like, I don't want to ask them to give, like, do you need advice for me? That's weird. Should be like, hi. Okay, this one's like, I'd love to chat with you, queen. Okay, let's chat, bitch. Come on. Hello? Hello? Is this Alicia? Is this Stephanie? Yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so fucking annoyed right after that, my fucking phone <laughs> just like, it hung up. Sorry. I had a technical difficulty. Let me call her. I have to call her back. Alicia, Alicia, sorry. Sweating. Hey. Alicia, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi. It's okay. Hi, how this are is, you? I'm good. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm just like getting. I'm just getting a hold of all this technical shit. But anyways, hi. We were having a moment. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank we're you. We're having a moment together. Thank you for giving me your number and calling me queen. I'm truly flattered. Of course. Yeah. You are the true queen. So. Well, you you a queen too, <laughs> bitch. You really are. Thank you. So I appreciate wh- that. Where are you from? What's your life? Are you single? Are you dating? Like, what's going on? Like, um, who are you? <laughs> um, I'm a 19 year old from Riverside, California. Oh my god, you're like close. An hour. Yeah, yeah, an hour from LA. That's kind of boring out here. <laughs> I lived in Redlands I- my junior year of high school. So I oh, know. really? Yeah, I went to. I don't know if you know any high school. I went to Redlands East Valley High. For junior year. Oh, yeah, I know that school. Uh, yeah, I went there for junior I was, it was a long time ago, but yeah, there's nothing there. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's lonely out here. <laughs> um, yeah. I actually just got a boyfriend like a week ago, my first oh, relationship. Oh, congrats. Oh, my God, congrats. <laughs> Thank you. How did you guys meet? Appreciate it. Uh, take a guess. <laughs> Tinder, Hinge. Bumble. Bumble. Okay, okay. I never used Bumble because it was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like me. I, I like Bumble because you can put your height preference. <gasps> you could do that on Bumble? Yeah, that's the only reason I use Bumble. Are you kidding me? I never knew that. Well, what's yeah, your height you preference? Do, you can like, oh, 6'2 and up because I'm 5'10. Sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, okay. I see, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love Six that. She's like perfect. Thank you. I really love your show. I've been, Thank I'm you. pretty sure I've listened to every single one of them since I found you probably a year ago. What's yes, your... I put all my friends on. <laughs> What's your favorite episode? Anything with Six Ella Fears. Yes, I the love OG. her. <laughs> yeah, our Josh is pretty cool, but I mean, I can't play favorites. I love them all. Yeah, they're all great. I love that. Well, I appreciate you, and uh, feel free to send me your address, and I'll send you a T-shirt. No way. Yes. I will cry. I, will, <laughs> I want you to wear my face on your back. Like, that's what I want I will you. do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. I love your merch. She literally oh, loves you. Like, she put me out. I'm her friend, but <gasps> I used to never her watch friend? podcasts. Hi. Like, <laughs> like, I never used to watch podcasts or anything. If you told me about yours, because like it's actually really good, you should listen to it. I would oh, force thanks. them to listen. You just play it. Literally, <laughs> and I actually like it and we love it. I'm so flattered, you guys. That's like that. Like actually makes me cry. I'm not gonna cry because I have Aww. like my contour on, but I like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I cry you. later when I wipe I just, it off. 
I just gave my friend lash extensions so she can't cry either. <laughs> oh, oh, you do lashes? I love that. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, I'm a, I just got my license to become an esthetician. Well, send me your information. Ago. I'm always trying to get my lashes done. Girl, I got you. I'll yes. send you the DM right now. Okay, DM me. <laughs> All right, guys. Of have course. a good one. Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right, bye. 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 Aw, Alicia and friend, so cute, but I do love getting my lashes done, and I need to get them done right now, so. This other one, uh, <sighs> we'll just go with it. I hope I'm not boring, y'all. This is a solo pod. This is different. Let's just take it as like, you know, I don't know. My time to really connect with y'all. That's it. Okay. Next up. Hello. Hi, this is Stephanie from Brocal Therapy. Hi. Oh hi. My god. Oh my god. Hi. What the? Oh my god. Hi. How Sorry, are you? I just said enough hi. Sorry, I don't. Are you? Is god, this, a, I was this like, is who a bad is time? <laughs> no, this is the perfect time. Me and my dog are making a PB and J. You know. Oh, I love that. Like You're... you do on a Friday. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I is a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I love a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Yes. I love that. Yes, girl, anytime. <laughs> Wait, what was your name? Is it Dio? My name is, yeah, Dio. Dio, okay. I'm actually recording an episode oh right God, now, so, so you're on the show, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. Can I use Hi, your really? name? <laughs> really, guy? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, Dio, what's your life? Wait, how old is your daughter? Tell me more about you. I want to know. I'm drinking wine and getting drunk, so I'm just here. I'm here to listen. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um. Me and my baby, her, she's five years old. She is a mixed Maltese, and she is oh, the love of my life. Oh, you're talking dog. I thought it was like a baby baby. Oh. I was like, girl. No. no. Yes, mother. <laughs> yes, I'm still a mom. I'm a dog mom, but proud dog mom. I am. But yeah, no, I yeah, she's that. amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Tommy. I was like, I, I didn't know, like, moms listen to the show. <laughs> I was like, that's a new demographic. Well, I know some moms that do. Some of my friends do. Okay, so, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm sure, moms. I'm sure there's me. moms that listen to the show. But, yeah, but how are you? Are you? How is everything? I'm good. I'm just like here on a Friday night recording an episode by myself and just like literally calling everyone in my DM that gave me their number. And Yeah, this is amazing. I just, I don't know, like, because I, everyone flaked on me. So I'm just like, well, I don't know what to do. So... I'm trying something new. So hopefully this is cool. <laughs> no, this is amazing. It's amazing. How can I help? What What do you need? Um, I mean, I I'm know. here. I'm here I think, for you. <laughs> I think I'm just more interested in like knowing, I, I really want to take this time to kind of get to know like every single one of you. Like I feel like you all know about my life and my day to day. And I, I know not like I want to know more about who y'all are. So where are you from? How old are you? Are you single? Are you dating? Yeah. What's up? Of course, of course. Um, I am from Coachella Valley, so my family is from Coachella. Yeah, actually, I love we're that. the festival town for most people know it. Yeah, I am 30. I just turned 30 this uh, <gasps> last year yes! during COVID. Oh, my I God. Know. I'm so glad you're 30. That makes me feel good that people my age like the show. <laughs> Like, girl we love your show me you. and my best friend literally every time we go to like Mexicali or we're going to LA we're like guess who we're listening to yes we're listening for co therapy because most of my cousins are therapists but I'm like <gasps> y'all this is too expensive for me what do they think what do they think of the show since they're therapists they're like she needs they that. like the like <laughs> basically the no bullshit kind of thing because okay. still you know as a therapist you still have to be professional and you still right. can't be like non-girl you can't be with that guy right. um so they definitely like that different aspect of it because most of their time it has to be super professional even if like they want to say something like oh no girl don't be with that guy right. they have to you know say the terms and be like you know well, what do you think about this and how is that affecting your mental health um See, i wouldn't be a good big therapist help because i would tell them to fucking dump his ass it's funny you ask i actually just called one of them and I was like we should get lunch I was like we should catch up because you know I need your help <laughs> um yeah, but the friends no, are we therapists. I mean you're literally your friends are therapists so that's like the perfect like 
you don't even need to go through like insurance. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> like you're fine. You know? I, I know. love that. No, yeah, they love your show. And actually, the reason we were talking about how like childhood traumas and how you know we're barely getting to like the very tip of our childhood trauma and how that affected us even more so in our dating and oh, yeah. our relationships. We're talking about how, like, I have a really close group of friends. You know, some of my cousins are my best friends and vice versa. And we've known each other for years. Like, we're a really tight-knit group. But obviously, people have come in and out of that group, whether it's girlfriends right. or someone you're seeing. And we were just talking about how we haven't really dealt with our childhood trauma and how that's still affecting us. Mm. You know, I have a friend who is kind of in a situation with a guy who has kids. Mm. And she wants to try like something, but she's still very much not secure and in being insecure. Like she can't stand that. Like she right. she can't stand being vulnerable. She can't. It's just not fathomable for her to to be like that. And it's wow. because she's always been like the basically the the strongest person in her family. She's the oldest. She's the oldest girl in a Mexican household. Oh yeah. Um. So. It's yeah, like the, a I'm lot sure of responsibilities you know were on her, like, you know, on her shoulders. So it's like in order to survive and to get through, like, it's you can't, you know, show emotion sometimes. I think that's also like I'm yeah, Filipino she, and my parents are immigrants. And I think that plays a part, I think, for a while where I mean, like as immigrant parents, they come to this country, they're trying to survive. So they don't like they can't like break down and be vulnerable. They're like, you have to get to work. You have to keep doing, you know to survive and feed the family. Yeah, there's so no like, stop. For sure. So it definitely, it plays an impact and, you know, how. Girl, how yeah, just even adults. being like, exactly, just even being from immigrant parents, like most of the people here in the Coachella Valley, I don't know if you um, know a lot of people from here who were born and raised here, but a lot of us, our parents, we're just first generation. We Like right. our parents straight up came from Mexico. Like my mom crossed that border, like boss has bitch, came here Love that and me. like started with nothing. So, you know, like, we're still dealing through that also pressure of, like, you have to be somebody. Like, you don't have an option not to just follow your dreams. We're trying to change that, especially the new generation and us being kind of stuck in the middle. So I tell my yeah. friends, I was like, I feel like we're, like, the buffer. Like, we're For not sure, too because old school, but we're also, like... You know, yeah. like not Gen Z over here burning shit. Right. Like, cause <laughs> like it's for it. sure, like we're love raised by immigrant parents in America. And like you see all your white friends mm -hmm. who like, you know, whose families have been here for generations who kind of like are brought up differently than, you know, like how we're brought up with parents who are from a different country. You know, it's it's different. So you kind of like see the difference. And sometimes it's confusing. Like, how come my parents don't? treat me like this or how come my parents don't give me this or whatever it may be because you compare it to like those who, who don't have immigrant parents like there's a difference oh so. yeah like I feel like uh, our community like especially my friends we we kind of bond over that is that we don't have time to just chill like that right. that was never an option for us like now we're making space for self-care like that's crazy <sighs> to think that we like are that. making space for self-care you know like before it's like what self-care like girl like my mom would be like levantate like get up you need to clean you need to go do your homework you need to do something like there's, there's always no something just to do yeah walling around yeah it's like oh you're bored well grab a grab a like freaking broom or something like, exactly. there's, there's always no something to do in the house sense. get to work <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah girl yeah, that was my my household house, too. you never say bored you never say bored at my house because my mom will look at you and be like oh you're bored okay well there's some weeds outside that oh. like need to be gone for sure. You know, so I think our culture, like I've, I've dated a Filipino guy and I feel like our culture is very so similar in the way our family similar. structure, mm -hmm. which is nice because it's just like, we're like, I was just talking about how we like, we try to make ourselves seem so different. But in reality, when we get down to it and the world brought up, it's like, oh yeah, I was like, you didn't have time to rest me either. Like I always had to be the best. Like there's no mediocre for us. And it's like never enough um, too, which is an unfortunate, no. unfortunate feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's never thing. that's why we tell my yeah. friends i was like you have to make room for self-care i know that sounds crazy but it's like more than ever like we have to do that and yeah. you know honestly part of my self-care is listening to you and like putting on a face mask and just I like looking that. crazy but like <laughs> look crazy be no crazy we do we fun. love you oh thank you we i love you here you so much thank you so much for calling me i i 
don't mean to take too much of your time, but oh, you're um, fine. this was a yeah, great conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I could <laughs> like I could talk about being raised by immigrant parents forever. Like I think it's something oh. that I've like realized it, how impactful it was in my life, and like I yeah. So it's mm-hmm. it's a thing, and I appreciate you just being like transparent with me. Oh yeah, girl. Like I said. Call me whenever. If you're ever in town in Coachella Valley, hit us up. We're, we're a community out here for you and, you know, oh, here to support you. Love that. Well, send me your address. I'll send you um, a T-shirt. Oh, no. I want <laughs> you to wear so my scary. face on your back. That's why. All right. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Theo, I appreciate All right. you. You're welcome, love. We'll have a great show, okay? All right. Talk thanks. To you soon. Bye. Hopefully. Bye. Oh, that was fun. Okay, she, I really, she was cool. I liked her. Okay. We got another one. We got another one. We got another one. Hopefully she picks up. Okay. Hello? Hi, it's Stephanie from Brokel Therapy. Oh my gosh, hi. Hi, I just got a missed call from you. Oh my gosh, yeah, I literally, it was so weird because yesterday I sent you an email like last week and I wanted to send you another one, but it's like such a long story that I was like, I wish I had like a number I could call. And then I saw that you posted that on your Insta and I was like, okay, it's meant to be. (laughs) Oh my God, and now we got to like talk. So I actually love this better for us. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. It's so nice to like talk to you. I love your podcast. Thank you so much for supporting and for reaching out. (laughs) But no, (laughs) tell me what's up. Do you want to, I mean, do you want to talk about it? Kiki, I got some wine. I'm a little tipsy. Oh my gosh. I just had a white claw. So same. Um, Okay. Then let's drink together. I kind of wanted to talk to you about like what kind of just went down with me. So basically I, um, just got out of a relationship like a month ago and um it wasn't like a toxic relationship or anything we actually met in college um and he was a great guy but like we ended up going long distance and it just like didn't work out um Mm. which was yeah it was just really disappointing how it ended um so I've kind of been and he's still like not where I live now so I've been trying to like move on and start seeing other guys and so I knew it, like, wasn't a good idea, but I downloaded Bumble and Tinder again. Okay. I don't know. They're okay. kind of fun, you know? Yeah. Like, it's good for that, like, quick attention that you need. Um, there's, no, there's nothing so, wrong in, with going on the dating apps to fill some time. Right. I get right. that. Um, but I've definitely been struggling with, like, I feel like I just have really high expectations for myself now that, like, I've been through some toxic relationships and like learned so much about myself and also just the past year and a half, like really spent time working on myself and trying to make me happy. And, and now I just feel like it's really hard to like meet guys and casually date them or like hook up with them and not have like super high expectations. Like, and I also just feel like men in general are really bad at the whole like casual dating thing because like casual dating to them is just like, Sex. hooking up with a bunch of girls having no connection at all um so it's just been like a struggle but I wanted to tell you about my most recent experience which was from um a guy that I went out with from Bumble so the first time we went out was two weeks ago mm. um and we I met him like in public because you know trying to be safe about everything and make sure he's not like, a murderer that's smart um, I love that I love that you did that Take note, y'all. Yeah. Take note. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, I've learned the hard way. Like, when I was younger, I wouldn't do that. And, like, that's always a good way to go is, like, meet in public, make sure you're comfortable with them. And I was, like, he was pretty nice. He was, like, a financial advisor. He was a couple years older than me. Um, He seemed really normal. But, honestly, like, the conversations weren't exciting at all. Like, they were just very mediocre. But, yeah, so we... Uh, basically we went, we met up at this like waterfront park, um, and we walked around for a while and then we went to dinner. So anyways, we ended up hooking up in my car (laughs) and it was, I love, I love a little car sex. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was my first experience with that, uh, because 
I've only hooked up with guys I've been dating before and like never done it in the car. So it was very mm. interesting and it was honestly pretty good. Um, but anyways, the, the story I want to tell is about the second time we hung out, which was um, this Monday, like a few days ago, we hung out on Monday um, and he was house sitting for like his neighbor before I left, I was just kind of feeling iffy about it because after we went out the first time, I could feel myself kind of like starting to fantasize more about him and yeah. starting to think like, oh, what if this could become something? Because I feel like I'm an Aries and I feel like I just always like fantasize every single man I'm with and make up you scenarios too, in my head that literally have never happened. Yeah, I just felt like after we hung out that first time, his energy towards me I could tell just changed and I like not in a bad way but I could just tell that he wasn't really putting in any effort he was kind of just like oh she's there like on the side if I want to hook up with her um which is fine because it's like that's kind of what I was looking for anyways but right. anyway so um getting off track here but okay, yeah. uh I drove all the way out to like the house he was house sitting at and obviously like he was alone and um I got there and we were like sitting outside on this like really nice deck. It was like this huge like mansion in the countryside. Um, and I could just tell like this man, he wasn't even like a douchebag. He just was so boring. Like he didn't ask me anything about myself. Ugh. Like I would ask him like, Oh, what did you do today? Like how was work? And he'd be like, it was good. Oh, I hate guys and like then that. Just, like, oh nothing. God. Yeah, and I was like, where is the effort? Like, I know that I'm here to hook up with you. Like, I want some sort of, like, Stimulation, some you know? mental stimulation. Like, yeah, seriously. Like, it makes the sex so much better. So I was like, I'm waiting for that, and nothing really came of it. So I kind of just was like, okay, so, like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are we doing here? Um, and he was like, well, like, we could go like in the house and like watch a show or something and obviously that just turned into us like going straight to the bedroom and um basically we ended up hooking up in the bedroom and he did not do like any foreplay at all literally barely did a thing to me I think he ate me out for maybe like 30 seconds and then put it in just and to, I was wow. just like I hadn't really had sex in a while either, so I was kind of, like, I needed, I love foreplay, and, like, any girl should get foreplay when they're having, like, a sexual experience, but it's, like, so many dudes, I feel like, just don't know how to do that, and, like, or don't want to, either or. Yeah, um, I agree. But basically what ended up happening was uh, we, after we finished hooking up, which really, it was very mediocre like a lot worse than the first time which is saying a lot because the first time was in a car so right. um it was really not the best and I just kind of felt weird after and I went to the bathroom um and I went pee and he was like in the other room and I saw that like I bled a little bit and I for me like not to get too deep into it but like my first experience with a man sexually was an assault and mm. I bled after that and so seeing that again like in a house that I wasn't familiar with with a random guy this was also the first guy I'd ever done this with like hooked up with on the first night or whatever um I just got super like triggered and didn't really know what to right. do and right. felt like really overwhelmed um and basically you like I just kind of went out and talked to him and I was like, did you notice that? So I was like, oh, like I bled a little. And he was like, oh yeah, I noticed because it was like on my fingers after like I finished. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, you good? And I was like, yeah, like I guess. <laughs> and then he didn't talk to me, didn't look at me, didn't touch me, literally didn't even like treat me like a human for the rest of the time I was there. Um, basically just like left the room after and let me kind of like handle myself. And he was like, well, I guess that's enough for one night. And <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. Okay. Um, what a fucking just, dick. Like, so, yeah. He was just so fucking disrespectful. And obviously like I was telling one of my coworkers about it after it happened. And she was like, well, obviously that means that it, he hurt you. Like he should have been more sensitive to that or just like, 
been less of a dick about it and been like, it's okay. Like, or have a conversation with me after and make me feel like a human, like that right. you didn't just use for sex. Um, but anyways, so I kind of got my stuff together and he was like, just looking at me, not saying anything. And I was like, what? And he was like, what? I can't just like look at you. And I was like, okay like I was like I literally don't know what to say so and I was just really uncomfortable I obviously was like like in some pain afterwards feeling really triggered he obviously had no sense of like how to pleasure a woman or how to handle a situation like that with a woman um so I was like I'm just gonna go and he was like okay like I'm pretty tired anyways and I was like okay um yeah what a fucking dick I got Sorry. Yeah, literally. And I got my things together and I'm like about to leave. He like tries to kiss me goodbye and I kind of just like dodge it and leave his house. And he's like, text me when you get home. And I was like, mm-hmm. And what? Leave. All of a sudden he Shut cares? The, the fuck is that? Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to fucking text you when I get home. Like, what the fuck? And so and I was like literally drove 45 minutes there, was there maybe like 40 to 50 minutes and then had to drive all the way back home. Like it was a total disappointment, like totally not worth it. Um, wasted so much gas on this pool. Uh, and, yeah, I hate that feeling yeah, when you're like, was, wait, that was such a waste of my fucking time and money. Yeah, literally. And I kind of had that feeling like before I left, but then I was just like, well, it was like kind of good the first time and like. Even if there is no connection, like, it's fine to just, like, I just kept telling myself, like, it's fine to have casual sex and, like, not feel a connection. But, like, deep down, I just know that, like, I need that to, like, have good sex with me. Like, I'm going to need a connection in some form. Um, But, yeah, basically, as I was, like, driving out, like, pulling out of the driveway, he was just, like, watching me through the window. And I was, like, what is this man doing? And so... I kind of thought about texting him about it after, but then I was like, as I was driving home in the car, I was like, you know what? That's it. I don't ever want to see him again. I don't owe him any sort of explanation. Right. I, he clearly has no idea how to treat a woman. And so I literally just removed him and blocked him on everything. And he never Good. got my phone number. He just had like my Snapchat. So <gasps> he can't reach me anymore. Um, but yeah, basically that's hell yeah. I love that he like just had your Snapchat and that's all your before you gave your number. That was actually really genius. Yeah, and I I didn't even really think about it until the second time we hung out. But I was like, I don't want to give him my number. Like, I don't want him to message me after. I don't want him to try to like apologize or anything. Like, because I knew that it would just come from a place of like just shallowness like I want to have sex again or something but uh yeah I was just like fuck this dude so I basically like since then I just feel like I've been struggling with like trying to find guys that like I have a connection with but I also just want to see casually because for me I feel like every guy that I'm with I tend to just like fantasize and want to have that relationship because I really am such a like long-term relationship person like at the heart but I just can't, I'm not, I don't want that right now. Like, I, it's not like I want a long-term thing, but it's so hard to find guys that actually, like, want to pleasure you, want to, like, respect you and give you what you need, but also be in a casual relationship and not be, you know, exclusive with each other. I honestly feel like it's borderline, like, impossible. I don't know. I feel like I have really learned how to, like be okay with being on my own like I yeah. love my alone time and I love being single and so I think just since this past relationship ended like it's really taught me that like being on my own can be really empowering and so I feel like even if I did find a guy like that I think I would have better boundaries than I would have before but Right. Obviously, if it was like a dream man situation and he was like giving me all that I need, then like maybe I would change but your mind. Yeah, I just don't even I don't even feel like that's honestly possible as of right now. So I'm like, I don't really know if that would happen. But you remind me of me in 2017 where like <laughs> I like 2017 stuff, except you, you actually seem more self-aware than I was back then. So I like I gave you props for that. But like. Where it's the feeling of, 
like the end feeling your independence for the first time because you got out of a relationship and really valuing that but also like there is that part of you that's like lonely and wants that attention and like struggling to find that you know and I think yeah, like definitely I think just like what what the reality is if like you're gonna put yourself out there and like even finding a friends with benefits no relationship is gonna be perfect serious or not friends with benefits or whatever like no relationship is perfect so it's kind of like having to navigate through that you know and then like I mean I think that it's so amazing that I mean it's unfortunate I'm so sorry that like like what you went through and feeling triggered and all that stuff like I know how that feels but I think that it's super dope that like you made that decision to be like yo I cut you off and like not to not put yourself through that like that's like ultimate self-worth like you literally know your self-worth and I think that's like super dope so like thank you I think it's just really like there's no like perfect advice but I think just like just knowing the reality of like dating is that the only person you control is yourself other people are just gonna be doing what they doing you know what I mean and like just having to like protect yourself and move accordingly and to remove yourself of situations that are dangerous. Like, I feel like you're already doing what you need to do, you know? And like, yeah, definitely. you didn't know that that was going to happen, you know? And you didn't know the sex was going to yeah. be whack, but, but at least that you went for it, even though unfortunately you felt triggered, but like, even though you felt triggered, you were like, yo, like you took yourself out of it. So I think that you should applaud yourself. I don't even think you really need advice. I'm just like, just reminding you, like, no, like, what you did was good. And, like, I think just continuing with that, you know? And, like... Yeah, definitely. It's a case-by-case, like, situation with, like, every dude, you know? Because, like, you don't know Mm -hmm. what you're going to get or, like, their set of traumas and how they're raised and how they're going to treat you. But at the end of the day, like, you're kind of learning what you like and you don't like. And... Yeah, for sure. And at least you found something you did not fucking like and were like, fuck that shit and took yourself out of it. Like, that's like major. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like it's so hard, especially when you're meeting guys on dating apps, because it's so hard to know what they're actually going to be like. And you don't know what you're getting yourself it's into. It's really hard to know. Yeah. And it's hard to know, like, if what they say they want is actually what they want or who they present themselves as right. is actually who they are, like. And I think that adds another level of, like, disappointment almost because I think you kind of get an idea of who they are in your head and you just really don't know if that's going to add up. That's Um, why I think, like, when y'all date, it should be like, okay, you're saying what you're saying, but, like, let me me see your actions. You know what I mean? Like... Exactly, yeah. So, but, yeah, no, I think you're super dope. Like, I... I feel like every time I get advice, it's always me being like, know your self-worth. Like, like you're yeah. better than this. But I feel like you already know that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, and I feel like you're already doing what you have to do. Like, I feel like dating is kind of just, like, surviving. <laughs> you know? Like, there's no, yeah, like, exactly. smooth way of doing it. Like, you're just, like, trying to get by and it's a case pay case situation. I feel like you handled this. Like, so even just the fact that you're like, wait, I met him in public. You did all the right things, you know? And Right, yeah. Sometimes it's just hit and miss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a hit or miss. You just never know. But um, Yeah, seriously. But I think it's dope that you are putting yourself out there and, you know, moving accordingly. Like, I think that, like, people that are listening right now, well, not right now because it's pre-recorded, but people that do listen to this, like, I hope they, like, kind of take something away from like your story in a sense because like you you did what you had to do for you and he did what he did and you're like okay you fucking suck so I'm out you're blocked whatever you know yeah like bye (laughs) yeah so I think that, that that's like super dope and mature and like you should be proud of yourself and it's like hurts and it's unfortunate like being triggered like I know that but you know it's yeah, definitely. I feel like the main thing that I yeah. wait, where are you where are you from? Like where do you live? You don't have to talk about I live in Portland. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Come through Oregon. 
<laughs> yes, where are my Portland ladies at? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, please. But yeah, thank you so much, Steph. Of course. Send me your address. I'll send you um, a free T-shirt so you can wear my face on your back. Oh or the front, gosh. whatever you prefer. Oh if you gosh. want my face on the front or back, I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> I would love either one or both. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate you. You a bad bitch. You got this. You got this. (laughs) Thank you. Also, I loved your episode with your boyfriend. It was so cute. And I was so happy to just see you guys like in this healthy, loving relationship together. It's so nice to watch. Well, have a great night. Well, thank night. you so much. I feel like I just had a good, like, therapy session. I think you did, and I felt like I did, too. Like, I felt like I really, like, I feel so good just after that. Have I, a good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. That was so sweet. I loved her. How dope was that that she just, like, told me her life? That was so cool. Like, I just want to say... Like, not to sound fucking cheesy or corny or whatever, but, like, this is honestly, like, kind of like a dream come true. (laughs) I'm going to cry. Ew, I'm getting my period in, like, three days. Um, No, honestly, it's, um, it's super cool to, like, to have the support from you guys and um, to, like, connect, you know, so, ugh. And, yeah, I just, I feel good. I feel like the human connection is so important. And that's, like, why I love doing what I do. And I wish I could just, like, do this all day, every day, and, like, talk to you guys and connect. And um, I just, I don't know. I just love it. I just love all of you guys. So let's see if anyone else is calling. <laughs> um. Let's call. Hello. Hi, it's Steph from Vocal Therapy. Oh my God, I'm fangirling a little bit, so disregard if I like pause for a second. You're good. Hi. <laughs> we always talk. Hi. You're actually, I'm recording an episode right now, so this um, will be on oh the pod God. if you don't mind. I do not mind at all. Can we say your name or do you want to stay anonymous? Go ahead. Say my name. Marissa Bell. Or I can say it. <laughs> did I say you? it right? Marissa That's Bell? My name. Yes, you yes. did. You say did. My name. Say my name. <laughs> What's up, though? I, I feel like to say that. <laughs> I feel like we talk all the time. You are so engaging. We, I love it. I, I, the biggest thing with me is that I have a hard time relating to people who don't understand the immigrant mentality and the mentality of like what it is to be a woman of color. And I Mm. resonate with you so fucking much. Part of my language, but I curse a lot. Um, Girl, you know what podcast this is. (laughs) Oh, I know. But some people still don't get it. Um, (laughs) But no, I just feel like I connected with you such a level I, I like I said I've never been excited for someone who I personally don't know like Aww. on a day-to-day type of thing until I saw a pod and I was like this is it like I've been trying to get my homegirls to listen to you one of my l- closest friends she hit me up but she's like bro the pod is amazing I was like I know bitch oh, oh my god you have know, no bitch. idea <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me that you like support and you spread the word and you engage with me. Always. And, like it really does mean a lot. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. But yeah, like it, it really like I can't say it enough. And I, I really like I feel like I'm so redundant when I say it, but I truly mean like it really makes me so happy. So thank you. Oh, of course. I also think too like I'm not a woman hater like I really want to see all women thrive and I want all women to have this growth mindset and to like learn and and, you know really just love who they are and you just I feel like what you're doing with your podcast it's like you're starting that work that a lot of women of color are scared to do I mean I'm Latin I'm I'm not I'm not even like my parents are immigrants like I am the immigrant like, I, my mom brought me here at a young oh, wow. age. So I feel like 
I feel like you just touch on what it is to be an immigrant. And, and, and it's just, there's not a lot of people that really talk about it and are open and honest about it. For real. And it's so funny. I just had, cause I've been calling and talking to people all night and I just had like such a great conversation with like another girl too, where she's like, you know, like a first gen and talking about immigrant parents. So like, mm-hmm. I love that that's like really something that like helps you like gravitate towards like me and the show like that, like makes me so happy. It really does. Because I feel like sometimes I battle like I, you know, I grew up in like the white suburbs and then I also have like immigrant parents. Mm-hmm, so me it's too. like, the, yeah, like the battle mm-hmm. being like, you know, white and talking like I'm white and talking American and, you know, and oh, yeah, and all that. No, and then, definitely. I, I get it. But also feeling like I'm not like Filipino like, enough, you know? So I think that like, uh-huh. it is, it is oh, a battle. Girl. Exactly. Like it, it feels, and also the biggest thing too is that like, I I don't put up with bigotry and like I, I stand for what I believe in. So if you're gonna come at me also with like homophobia, if you're gonna come at me with any sort of you know hatred towards someone else, I'm not gonna sit here and let you do it either. Ooh. I'm the type of person I'm a I'm a speak up and I believe it, like, girl. And you just continue to speak up. <laughs> I love absolutely, that. that's that's not gonna that's not gonna stop. And I feel like also you. I'm, I'm not as nice as you when it comes to certain things. I feel like you just portray certain issues. Like, you talk about certain issues in such a nice manner. And I'm like, dude, uh-huh. I would have been a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have been like, it's, 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 there's, I would have been so mean. <laughs> and I, and I also commend you on also with your transparency about even like relationships, not even just like, a, you know, the immigrant mentality or, you know, being a person of color. I think also just like, your transparency with your relationships. Like, I, you and I have talked. Like, I'm literally going through this breakup of this right. situationship. And I, and the the episode with, you know, the breakup with Morgan. And I was like, dude, like, I feel your pain. And, like, right. I felt it. And I, and I could resonate with it. And then now going through this, I'm like, I literally want to, like, throw shit. Because it's just so stupid. It's like... Right. And I feel like your your honesty and your transparency, and like I look back at like older episodes, and I you know especially with Rose with like the honesty and transparency that you and Rose, even with Rachel too, like it's yeah. just so raw. Yeah. And I'm like, like I I want to do something like that. Like I I want to be a, you know a little Stephanie Megan. <laughs> like I want to be like I want I want to also portray you know. Like, like, I, I think there should be more of us. I think there's a, a more. Absolutely. There should, it shouldn't just be, and I'm sure there's others out there and I'm just, you know, not naming them right now, but like, mm-hmm. but it, it, that's the thing. It's like, I don't think there's enough, you know? So I think that like, I don't, you should continue I to don't. use your and voice I, and you know, so yeah, absolutely. I stand by it. I have a question for you, if you don't yeah. mind me asking. Oh, ask, ask away. I'm drinking wine. I'm a um, little, you got the tipsy Stephanie Megan on the pod with you, so oh, ask away. Oh, okay, okay. I'm ready. So I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm even more excited now because I fangirled that first, and now I'm ready for it too. But I have, um, I was wondering, what really got you to start being vulnerable with um, your current man? Like, what really made you, like, really, really deep down, like, was like, you know what? Like, I need to let all this go from the past and, like, really enjoy him. Right. I think it honestly, to be real, I think it just got to a point where I was just fed up. I, like, was so, like, I've been on so many dates and these, like, superficial relationships that were so redundant. And I think that, like, especially Uh after, like, the heartbreak with Morgan, like, you know, I did have, you know, I I don't like to admit it now, but I did have, a, you know, a very strong emotional relationship with him. And I really realized, like, how much I, I enjoyed that, you know. It's just unfortunate, obviously, or very fortunate that it just wasn't him. But it was, like, after that, realizing, like, wait, I value, like, deep conversations and I don't want to go back to, like, these superficial dates. Like, I want something real and mm-hmm. I'm kind of just like, yep. you kind of just like, you get to a point where you're just like, yo, like it's me. Like, I don't give a, I'm, t- I'm tired of like trying to be something else. Like 
I am me. I am not perfect. Yep. I am a mess. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I'm a messy person. It's okay. Oh, you know? Right. And so <laughs> I don't know. I think it was just got, I just, you know, I went through again, I documented most of it. Like I went through so much mm-hmm. bullshit that, that I just got to a point. Yeah. Where I was like, yo, I'm just done. Like all I need to, like, I'm just going to be me, you know? And so I think, and I will say, I, I think a bit of being in quarantine and COVID kind of helped with that because I think Mm -hmm. all of us could agree where we had to be like picky on who to like spend our time with. Cause obviously with Uh like germs, whatever. So Mm -hmm. obviously we're to choose the people, you know, at least for me, like I was choosing people. We surround ourselves with. Right. Like I was, Mm -hmm. you know, mending friendships and gaining friendship. Like, I don't know. Or like just keep, or like my so my circle was getting smaller because I valued Mm -hmm. relationships more because we could only hang out with, so many people so I think that that yeah. like probably I, helped I feel like that's huge huge I feel like that's huge how like how COVID to be honest if, if, if you really look back at it how COVID affected so many of our relationships like I know for yeah. a fact throughout this COVID I lost a really good friend we were a roommate and I lost her and I think I don't navigate friendships the same way because COVID really opened my eyes to certain things about people and now I oh yeah I don't like I'm the type where it's like I don't even want like new people in my life because it's like it's like scary. Also, the biggest thing with me is that it's it's been almost a month of like not being with him and and I'm worried because I I jumped on those dating profiles quick because I wanted to distract my mind. Right. Um, having ADHD, you have to always be doing mm. something different. Right. Um, and I know that about myself. So I was like, I'm just going to distract myself. I'm not taking any of these men serious. But I'm really bored with these men. And I feel like for me, it's, it has to be an intellectual conversation. Like and nothing. if it's not, yeah. like, I cannot be vulnerable. Exactly. I can't, I, like, even my friendships. Like, if my friends and I can't talk about the nitty and gritty oh, of yeah. why we are the way that we are, then I don't want you in my life. Like, yeah, if, we're if you not can't talk about our traumas together, and be vulnerable, then, like, why the fuck you here, exactly. bitch? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I get that. Exactly. And I, I, and I feel like... I. It, the reason why I asked that question is because I know that the guy that I was with, love him to death. I still love him. And I, I honestly think I always will, but I don't think that's ever going to get repaired unless he gets that therapy and really works on himself. Right. But even then I can't, like we talked about, I can't hold, hold on to hope, but um, I really don't want to hold myself back either. And that's why I asked that vulnerability part, because I honestly don't want to be vulnerable with any man. And that's okay. Like, I don't like wanna... you don't need to be vulnerable with just any man. You just got to be vulnerable. I think I mean also going back to your question what helped me get vulnerable with like my boyfriend now Brian, which I could say his name. Like he, like it yeah. also helped that he I was tw- terribly wrong. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of a lot of people <laughs> were terribly wrong. Except that one person in my my comment section on YouTube, she like she knew what's up, but she like knows everything. I like shout out to her because yes. she like found out she found For my real. ex-boyfriend's like I'm going to say I deleted her comments. I love you, girl. But like I had to delete it. She like found her my ex-boyfriend's like fiance, like now baby ma, whatever. So, you so know, like, she knows. Everything. I thought I was a good FBI agent. That no, girl is good. Me, dude. I, yeah, I fucks with her heavily. Like I dead ass want to meet her and like dead ass want to be like okay dude how do you do it like i need a crash course. y'all should talk in the comments on youtube FBI. and connect because like I'm I, down. I probably will i mean not that i need to anymore but like one day i might need to hire her for something to like investigate because she's great oh shoot but i think i was going oh yeah going back to chris or to, to brian like he yeah. was he also that's the thing is like i did my work i was also kind of just like fed up with the mm-hmm. bullshit i met someone who was on that same kind of wavelength too you know, yes. so sometimes you could do the work on yourself, but like if the other person is just not meeting you there, then yeah, like no. it is what it is, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm never going to settle for a man who doesn't understand, have emotional intelligence, right? Like that's the biggest thing. Like you need emotional to intelligence emotional is the biggest thing. It, it, you go so far with emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. So. Cause I feel like emotional intelligence really sets the rest of your life up when it comes to like finances like everything else, like when you have that emotional intelligence, like you're, you're like, you pretty much like have, you know, the characteristics of like a husband. Right. And, and that's my thing is that I'm not settling. And I feel like the fact that you didn't settle, like, Oh, I commend you. Oh, I, 
swear. Yeah, I, I could have been, I I been in Alabama song, pregnant right now, but I chose not to be because I was oh like, my that's God, not please what I want. No. no, I think I, 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 it's just, your journey has been crazy because I found you in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I, girl, when I tell you I binged, I binged. Um, <laughs> All things. I, I, I binged and I just, I just felt the connection and I had never cared for podcasts until you. And then it, you just kind of like, yeah, the Broke Girl Therapy opened up this like, this whole this realm podcast of like knowledge. This podcast in you that just needed to like. <laughs> dude, dude. And, and let me just tell you, HK, I know everyone knows his name, but I'm going to try to keep it as yeah. HK. He be teaching some shit that I'm like, dude, I wasn't that big on like sucking dick. But at this point, because of HK, I stepped up my game. I was like, I'm good at sucking dick now. No one can stop me. I am so confident and good at sucking dick now because of that episode. Oh my. Legit. Literally same. Same. And I'm like, dude, like. He changed my life. Dead ass. I'm like, HK. Yeah, no, he did too. He changed my life. Like, we, I, I told you and I told him, I think it was one of the stereo episodes. Y'all let me know when you guys are in the Bay. It's only an hour and a half drive. I'm there. Like, oh, we, we gonna fuck some shit up. That's why I fucks with you because, like, the fact that you listened on stereo, and I think I had, like, two listeners, and it was probably you and my boyfriend. Like, the fact it, it that, like, was. yo, you, you, like, are a ride or die. Like, I already even sent you a free t shirt. Like, I even, like, yes, I and, just. But- yeah, thank you. I got you. so many compliments. I, and they were all, people were like, no more toxic relationships. It's like, period, no more. <laughs> Don't, if, if you're toxic, no. I had one guy on Tinder tell me, he was like, um, he, he like, low-key said something. Of, he was like, a little toxic. And he's Hispanic, and in, in, in Spanish, it's toxico and toxica. I was yeah. like, please don't tell me you're toxico. And this toxico, man said. Toxico, I love that. I, yeah. What do you I was say? like, please tell me you're not toxico. He goes, just a little bit. I was like, unmatch. <laughs> no, thank he's you. A, he said, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, uh, uh-uh. hey, uh-uh. you have, to, but that's dope. That's dope that he was he was real about it though. Like that saved you time. He was real about it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And honestly, like none of none of because okay, my friends would tell you I got like I can if I really wanted to I could rotate men if I if I wanted to I don't because at the end of the day I don't want to play with no one's feelings like and it's, I don't it's feel a like lot that's of work. right either. It's like it's a it lot really of work. Is. <laughs> a lot of energy it really is it's kind of draining yeah to be honest but um what I've learned is that my demographic is mostly Latinas and I fucking love it like I feel like with you yo I fucks with y'all and I think is it because I like I look Latina so I feel like it's just and even though I'm not Latina I'm I'm Asian (laughs) but yeah at the same time we're brown we still have the same struggles you know so Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like we do we do have kind of the similar things. Um, I have been doing what I can to also educate myself about the Filipino community, you know, all communities, but I watch a lot of like different comedians who just lay it down, you know, the way that I feel like resonates in myself about, you know, the Filipino community. And, and I heard this from Joe Coy. He's like, Filipinos are the Mexicans of of the Asian community. So I feel they like also say we're no the wonder, blacks. you know, I think of- Issa, Issa Rae said that we're the blacks of the Asians, too. So we're either the Mexicans or the blacks. You know, <laughs> I feel like both cultures are amazing. So I could you could take both. Yeah, I'll claim it. <laughs> like I'll claim like, it. I'll take it. Yeah, so. absolutely. I think I think um, we fucks with you heavily. Like my friend that she listened to. Um, to that episode where I actually called in um, or sent that voice memo. Oh, yeah, your audio message. She was like, I fucked with it. Yeah, my mm-hmm. audio message. And she's like, I fucked with her. I love how, like, quirky and funny she <laughs> is, but she's real. I love that. Oh, I love you guys. Mm-hmm. I love everyone. This, I honestly, you. like, cried earlier because I was like, this is really oh. cool that I get to, like, sit down. And, like, you know, I'm doing this solo show because everyone fucking flaked on me. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so I'm just kind of like, well, fuck. I'll just like talk to like you guys, and I just feel like I don't know if the show is gonna be good or not because it's just like it's totally different from the other episodes. But for me, I I feel good at least to like be able to like connect with you guys individually Mm -hmm. that I was able to talk to. So like, it's to be honest, I like that you're doing this. 
Um, and, and I think the biggest reason why I love that you're doing this is because, you know, there's people who have podcasts but don't also want to get to know their demographic um, oh, and no, get to know the friends. people who actually are like, exactly. And I feel like what really makes it your, you know, bro girl therapy in general is so different about other podcasts that I, you know, I've listened to one, two episodes and like I can't because they act like they're better than their demographic and to a certain extent. Yeah. And I think you come from a place of, like, we're all learning and growing. Because I know what it's like. I'm not on here we, being, like, look at me. I'm a celebrity and so cool and exactly, so likable. Like, exactly. I'm here, like, I am a working so citizen. Humble. I'm a working citizen mm-hmm. who's also a woman of color. Like, I am with you guys, you know. So that's the whole point, you know, is to, like, yeah, I have, like, a bunch of listeners from across the world. But at the same time, it's, like, I'm still, like, a working citizen, <laughs> you know, yes, in this capitalistic you, you country. You multiple jobs like a lot of us. Yes. <laughs> right, like, you I know, think, so, yeah. I think it's because you get what the struggle is. Yeah. And and it has to do with the way that you grew up. And also, so oh. many people can get the struggle that you're going through because a lot of us are going through it too. And I feel like a lot of different other, other podcasts don't talk about the struggle. Like, I, I've grown up for the most part in Northern California and you were talking to me about like multiple, you, you're talking to me through the pod about like multiple jobs and that, and like really trying to make ends meet and then like mental health and the mental stigma in the Latin, in, in, in the Filipino community and in the, and really like it's so relatable. It's, that's the thing. And you're just so humble about it. You're just like, dude, we're all learning and growing. And I feel like, I will always give you praise because you're just so genuine. Like it's yeah, coming from a God. place I, to me, to me, I feel like it's coming from a place of love. Yeah. Like, it, like it does. I want it's just other like, people to grow. Yeah. It makes me feel I good. Think, yeah, I think I what's kept me like, longer was just like hearing that you guys are like, Oh my God. Like, I feel like I've, like I've heard people be like, I got out of these toxic relationships and I've, you know, now know what a toxic relationship looks yeah. like or what a healthy one looks like and all these yeah. things. And it's just like, that's why I do it. I think I also kind of do it. Like I mentioned this, I think in a past episode, like I do it for my younger self because a lot of my demographic is like mm-hmm. early 20s and I like really hated myself at yeah. this time. So I really kind of like, oh do my that. gosh, I get it. I do it mm-hmm. to kind of like, if anything, like heal that part of me, you know, so yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, the biggest, I think the, the, what I love that you just said is talking to your younger self because a yeah. lot of, a lot of us, especially cause I'm 24. So, um, yeah. I'm in my mid twenties and, um, I was still I, going through know, that. I'm I talking about my mid twenties self too. <laughs> she was, <laughs> oof, oof. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, now at, at, I'm taught, I, I want to help my teenage self because yeah. I went through a lot at that age. And I feel like the, I love that you said you're talking to your younger self because I feel like I'm at this place in my life where I want to fix or not fix, but like nurture my younger self and be like, dude, it's okay. You went through this shit. You overcame it. It wasn't easy. Acknowledge those, those, that pain that you felt, but also know that life moves on and like, we're going to keep going. And, And I feel like you doing this is like literally helping our younger selves because trust me I, I'm I, one thing that I already know what this pod does is it helps the younger girls who have zero guidance on any yep. of this stuff because mom is either absent or dad is a single dad or whatever you know what I mean whatever yeah. the situation is and I feel like you really just want to help other women or female identifying male identify whatever whomever yeah. like I feel like you just get it and and even having like your friends like oh my god like the group of friends that you have are so dope and I feel like you're just opening up the perspective of so many different demographics through your pod that help you can't see right now my eyes are like tearing up so I'm but I'm listening continue (laughs) like I'm like so like Uh (laughs) grateful for real thank you you know it's crazy you're grateful I'm grateful because (laughs) I I honestly will tell you like and, and I, I I am hyping you up, bitch, because you deserve it. Like, Aww. you, 
your pod has literally rescued me from the times that I just wanted to crawl into a ball and die. And, and I just, I just don't feel, I, even like for me, like my favorite artist is Alicia Keys. And that's yeah. because her music was so pivotal at a certain time of my life where I wanted to die. And, <sighs> and this pod was there for me the way Alicia Keys was throughout my high school days where it's like I felt so alone and I felt like nobody got me and as yeah. soon as I listen to a new episode or older episodes I'm like dude she gets it oh. and I felt hurt like I felt so hurt throughout these really dark I'm gonna cry right now because oh I'm God, just like gonna cry. let's cry together I- <laughs> no dude I'm being serious like I, I feel like this pod has has affected obviously more than me in a, such a positive manner, but I can only speak for myself. Like, like I said, it's just, it, you rescued me like Ugh. from this dark place that to be honest, nobody else could have gotten me out. Like I could only do it. And this pod kind of helped me through that. Like my loved ones oh. didn't know how, how bad it was. And, and this pod kind of rescued me in a way. Yeah. So I, I, like I, I, you're going to continue to keep, having me hype you up for the rest of your career because you unintentionally saved me oh my god that's so powerful i love that oh like I, i'm being i'm being serious like you oh, yeah. are doing you. this for your for yourself and for your friends and for others but i don't think a lot of people realize what what the, your pod of how it affects others like you literally saved me from this hole that if I would have gone into it would have been done like it would have been a wrap oh I'm so sorry that you've like Like, felt like that sad and I get that because I know that feeling oh my god why am I crying (laughs) um it's just crazy right because we're crying together I I think it's just crazy right because (laughs) Oh my god, my nose is running. It's stuffy. We're it's a lot of things, um, because I do the episodes, you know, I edit them, I put them up, and then I live my life. You know, I have a nine to five. I just literally just chill in my apartment with my animals. That's literally what I do. And I just and I see the numbers, you know, and I see that people are tuning in, and it's like okay, cool. It's like. Sometimes it becomes like a number. Sometimes I get stressed because it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this episode didn't do as well as this episode. Why? And I get into, you know, like dissecting and mm-hmm. I sometimes lose like, you know, the purpose, you know, I mean? because you, like, you get swallowed yeah. by like the analytics of things, you know, and then mm-hmm. to hear. Well, as an entrepreneur, you have to disconnect that. Right. Like, you exactly. have to look at those things as an entrepreneur, so and, that makes sense. And people tell me all the time, you know, like, oh, this has really helped me and all that stuff, but to, like, really hear and understand, like, just as you were saying, like, how much it's helped you, like, that's, like, like, wow, you know what I mean? Because, like, I just, I can't even imagine, like, I don't know, it's just, like, it's it's just crazy, you know? Like, I know that it's doing it, but to really hear it the way that you said it so you know, like, just so genuine and real and honest. It was just kind of like, oh, shit. Like, it's like a reminder for myself. It's like, keep going, even though I know you're keep tired. Exactly. You know, and sometimes I have doubt or mm-hmm. sometimes I compare myself no. to other shows. I'm like, why am I not as successful as that? But it's like, it's not about that. It's about mm-hmm. the impact, you know. So but what, how you're connecting with your audience. I feel right. like uh, you you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's. It, you have to look at those analytics. You have to look at the numbers. Like, yeah. As an entrepreneur, you have to do these things. Yeah. But I also feel like doing those things, you lose touch of what the purpose was of the pot in the first place. And and I'm the kind of person where I will always, always give the praise where it's deserved because yeah. I, 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 I understand that m- mindset of an entrepreneur. I am not one, but I, I get it. Yeah. Um, like, and I also it's just things, like, but you know, I, sometimes, no. like I don't, it's like, I know I see you guys listening, but then I don't actually see you guys listening or feel you got, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, like when you guys engage yep. with me and that's why I loved it so much that you've always been so engaging is that like, it makes you guys so real to me, you know, that it motivates me to keep going. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. So 
I just want to say thank you for that. And oh, it, always. I, I, it means a lot. I think per- personally, and you know, the fact that you even said this, I'm still fangirling inside. I'm keeping a console <laughs> collected. But, um, but I think one of the biggest things that makes me so grateful to ha- have you, you know, put your heart, because you could tell the amount of effort you put into your pod. Like, Oof. you can see it. Um, <laughs> and if people don't see it, they're oblivious. Like, they really need to look at the effort. Like, you could tell the transition of the setup. Like, right. you could tell the quality of the mics. You could you could tell how much time, money, and effort you have put into really trying to do good, really have the content be what you want it to be like you're right. really trying to get to this place where this pot is exactly the way you envisioned it and and i we appreciate that i mean i can't i can't speak for others but i appreciate that yeah because it shows that you really you really do care about the pot you're just not bullshitting it because some other people do um right like you have this passion and you're genuine and and i i like i said it's, it's a forever thing i'm sorry girl but you you're not gonna stop seeing me like, <laughs> I appreciate that because I'm not gonna, kinda, I'm not going anywhere either. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's kind of you're kind of stuck with me, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's the, it's the truth. Like you're just so genuine, and I think also, also what a lot of people don't who don't work in that in that realm, you know, of podcasting or you know, working multiple jobs and really understanding what it takes to you know survive in this yeah. world, like. You really portray that. Like, you really, really are trying to do your best. And, like, when you took, like, that three, four weeks off, I was like, dang, low-key, like, but hurt. I was like, what am I going to do at work now? <laughs> but I understood it. Right. I I get it. You don't want to get uh, – like, even Rose, I feel like Rose was talking about this writer's block. You don't want to get a creative block because after a while, you're going to get burnt out. Like, you need to do what also fills your soul. Yeah, and also to make and, the and show I think, better, I need a break sometimes too. It's like, y'all yes, still want absolutely. great content? Then let me like have these this, this month off. <laughs> I feel like yep, I we, we don't want you to get burnt out, Steph. Girl, we don't. We, we, girl, we need you. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why those breaks matter when I take them, you know? Because I, always, I, always come, I feel like I always oh. try to come back like even better, you know? So I like, I will take the oh, break. Oh yeah, you always like, coming in hot. <laughs> You coming in hot every time. Every time you take a break, so you coming in hot with that content. And I'm like, dang, this girl took that. Was she working throughout this break or something? Sometimes she, it doesn't like, feel it was, like a break because, like, my mind doesn't shut off because I'm like, oh, okay, what can I do mm-hmm. when I come back? Like, it, you know what I mean? But, you know, it yeah. just takes break from, like, the labor of it where it comes to, like, editing and stuff like that. You know, like, I won't be editing or whatever, yeah. but I'll just, I'll, I'll be mm-hmm. thinking about what's next. But, you know. Yeah, but, um, I definitely and, am running out of time. This is wait, a long episode but, for sure, but I feel like I just had girl, the most amazing conversation with you, and I feel like we always engage in the DM. So it was so nice to like just chat mm-hmm. with you. And I think here, here, exactly. Um, I want to say one thing: is that you're such a blessing. Um, um, you're a blessing. We're, and, both, we're both a blessing. Oh. <laughs> we're both great. <laughs> very true. Very <laughs> true. Um, very, very true. I am a, I am a blessing. I am here to do divine things and you know change someone's life one day at a time. I really want to work. You've changed and mine. I do all that. I, mean, I know. You say that like oh, I. You, I've, you changed mine. Yeah, but like Ooh. no, but like for you real, no for idea. real. Like I'm not just saying that just to be like no, like you really like I really mean no, that. No, no, like what? I feel like even just even just the small things like of you just engaging and commenting and supporting and posting and calling in right now like that truly like it just probably is just nothing to you like oh whatever but like just as much as like I helped you just know that that's helping me too and that's just if anything just oh my god I'm gonna cry it's just uplifting so it's a beautiful thing so continue to be yourself I think that you're so incredible and I love how vocal and passionate you are and you stand up for what's right like that's dope so don't let any motherfucker like, and I'm sure you won't, Never. I'm not even worried at all, but like, <laughs> like just a reminder, just in case, you know, Oh yeah. No, don't let them turn down, we need to remind sure ourselves won't. for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is a for everything. Yeah. Oh, I mm-hmm. love that. Well, it, this episode will be out on Monday, so stay tuned. Oh my God. That. Now I'm nervous. No, this is perfect. I'm perfect. Cause I'm going to save it for when I'm traveling. 
Because okay. I'm, I'm leave, literally leaving the country. So this is perfect. Ah, I'm excited. Okay, great. Woo, have a safe trip. I appreciate you. And we'll talk soon. For sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. 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 You guys. That was the best combo ever. I know that was really long and I definitely have to edit that, but and edit down because that's like a 50 minute long conversation. But she's great. Marissa Bell, thank you so much for supporting and just letting me know all those things. Like that's just like whether this episode is great or not, it doesn't matter the way that you made me feel empowered and great. It makes me feel great. So I really Really, really appreciate you and appreciate all of you guys that have reached out. Why am I so emotional? Um, and I think, yeah, let me know if I should do this again. I probably will because I feel like I just want to get to know more of you guys. I think this is important. Like I, you know, you guys always hear my shit. Like I want to, I want to, I want to talk to you. So a human connection is, is important. So Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to plug myself. Follow me at Stephanie Megan or go to brocotherapy.com. All that shit is there. And I have merch. So you can buy some merch and wear my back on your mother. Wear my face on your motherfucking back, bitch. All right. Bye. Broke Girl Therapy. Broke Girl Therapy. Broke Girl Therapy. Broke Girl Therapy. Broke Girl Therapy.